Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are going to be talking about single note lines in funk guitar. And single note lines are very, very, very common in funk guitar. And the reason is that they can weave really well. They're not too big. Sometimes chords are just too big and they get in the way with everything else. They get in the way of the drums and the bass and they get in the way of horns if there's horns or the singer. So sometimes having just a nice little single line can really, really work into a groove a lot better than a chord could. Uh, sometimes you get single lines as well as chords. Uh, and what I want to do is just talk about some of the different approaches. One of them, particularly playing with scratches, is going to need a lesson all to itself in the future because it's uh, technically quite difficult. But I'd rather give you an overview of all of the different ones and give you some examples of songs that you should check out how to play and uh, to you know get some real world experience. Really important to hear the masters at work and, and learning songs that use these kind of techniques. I think it's a pretty big deal. So. Um, the first, the first one I want to talk about is having a muted line, okay? So very often in funk guitar, if you've got a single note line, it's going to be muted. So by that, I just mean using the outside part of your pick and hand to rest on the strings. Okay, so instead of this, you get... Okay, now often in funk, the notes are quite short, shorter than you'd even get with the sustain. So what you tend to do, just like with the chords when we do when we press the chord down just as we play, we can do that with a note as well. So just an individual note, let's play the, the D note, the third finger on the seventh fret of the third string. Okay, I'm actually pressing the finger down as I play. If I leave it down, you can still hear it ringing out, even though there's quite a lot of mute on, compared to, you can hear it really tightens up. Okay, so very often in funk you get these sort of or little grooves like that where it's just very, very, very short little lines, sometimes very simple. Okay, now one thing that you might notice is that I'm kind of gripping differently than I might normally if I was doing something more technical. So, uh, you know, if you're doing any, you know, faster sort of things, you, you tend to have the fingers kind of a bit more parallel and the thumb around the back. With these kind of funk things, I tend to grip the, the neck a bit more like it's a bat. And I want to cover all of the strings for some, particularly for scratching, which we'll talk about a little bit about in a second. But um, for this sort of thing, I'm trying to keep as many of the strings covered and touched by other fingers as I can so they don't ring out, just to avoid having any, if I, can you hear the other strings, I'm not sure if you could hear that or how clearly that's going to come across on your computer, but the other strings start to ring out a little bit when you, if you're not touching them and that, and that can kind of suck on a, on a nice funky groove, okay, so just trying to keep all of the strings covered with any spare fingers is a good idea. Um, some songs that you might like to check out with that, uh, James Brown, The Good Foot, uh, or Good Foot, I think it's called The Good Foot. Uh, it's got a really, really nice, it's only got three notes. It goes do, 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 do. I don't play them in case I get in trouble, but uh, uh, yeah, it's very, very simple uh, little line there and a really, really good one to practice because it's so simple, all down strums with a bit of palm mute. Uh, any of you new to transcribing, you might want to try that one because there's only three notes. They're all on the G string as well, just to give you a little hint. Um, but that one's a really good one to practice locking into the groove because even though it's so simple to really make it feel good is 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 the trick with that particular one. Um, Pick up the pieces by the average white band's got some beautiful uh, muted lines in it as well, as well as some fancy kind of chord stuff going on at the same time in the other guitar part. So that's one uh, definitely worth checking out. Play that funky music, another very very common one with a little muted single note line right at the beginning of the song. Uh, so that's a, another very obvious one where you might want to check out that uh, single line technique but there's going to be a lot more and again I'll, I'll, I'm going to put a list of other songs that you might want to check out on the, on the website as well for you. So the second commonly used funk technique when you were talking about single lines is muted picking okay so whereby with you know with funk strumming and scratching it's strumming all of the strings the same kind of idea works with single notes so if I just use my I'm using my little finger on the seventh fret of the uh, third string there and I'm using fingers one, two and three just to sit on all of the other strings behind it just to make sure everything's muted even though we're not going to be playing those other strings yet. Um, just playing the third string we can do just like strumming going one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and down up down up down up down up down up down up. Okay just alternate picking 
down, up, down, up, one E ender, two E ender, three E ender, four E ender, okay? And then what you can start to do is put in a note just by pressing that finger down, the little finger down. Or... Or... It can be as simple or as complicated as you want to make it, or, or as the record needs to be. Some fantastic versions of this sort of, um, you know... So there's one that's very similar to that, uh, what I just played there. Very, very simple groove. There's a Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, the Michael Jackson uh, song. I think it's a Steve Lukather guitar part. I might be wrong about that. I think it was Luke that played a beautiful, uh, funky guitar line in the, in the backing of that uh, song. I, think, I can't remember the key. It might be... Um, based around a B note, I can't, can't remember exactly, but uh, that's a really good example of having these kind of muted hits going in there. They're not all the time, again, just like we've talked about in previous lessons, having scratches all the time can get a little bit annoying. You don't want to have these kind of muted notes going all the time. You might just want to have... So there's a bit of space involved. It doesn't have to be all the time because it's just like oh get away this noise you know you want to allow some space for other instruments to to breathe in your funk playing as well it's a pretty pretty uh, big deal the next type of single line that I want to talk about briefly is doubling the bass. Now this is a really, really common kind of a guitar thing going on, particularly if you've got more than one guitar. One might track the bass so it'll play the same or very similar to the bass line. Uh, Sissy Strut's a good example of that. Um, great uh, Curtis Mayfield song called Pusher Man as well. Uh, another one from Superfly. Incredible uh, uh, record, that one. And some really uh, incredible guitar on that record altogether. You definitely should be have that in your funk guitar collection. But this idea of doubling the bass is a really, really big idea. You're generally going to be playing on the thicker strings. You're probably going to use a little bit of palm muting, but not necessarily so. But the big thing I wanted to mention there, if you're doing that kind of thing, is making sure you lock in with the bass properly. So really listening to the bass, not just where the, the starting note is, but where the notes finish. We've talked about this in relation to chords, but it happens with single lines as well, is noticing when a note, when the end of a note is. Because that's the kind of thing, if you're doubling a bass and you keep your guitar part going when the bass stops, it just makes it sound a little bit wonky. So if you're doing a, a song where the guitar is doubling the bass, make sure you listen closely to the bass and the guitar, uh, particularly the bass if you're playing in a funk band, so that you're, you hear where the bass note finishes and you make sure that the guitar note finishes at the same time. It's, that's the key thing to remember if you're doing a, a, a line that's doubling the bass. That's what you want to watch out for. Uh, now the last thing I want to talk about is doing single notes with scratches. Now this is a fairly difficult technique to get your head around, right? It, it took me a long time, it's something I still work on. So if you're new to this sort of thing and you're trying it for the first time, don't be disappointed if you don't get it straight away because it's likely to take you quite a lot of practice. Uh, there'll probably be periods where it feels a bit easier than others, I think that's normal. Uh, and there are times where you're going to have to stop and think about technically and physically how you're going to achieve this. So what, what it is I'm talking about is being able to strum all of the strings but be able to get some notes to ring out but not all of them. So having this kind of Okay, now what's actually happening is I'm muting all of the strings all the time. So this hand's still just doing like it was scratching for, for chords. Um, and then I'm using my fingers to try and press down notes as I go through. Now, uh, very often it's the underneath of the first finger is touching all of the strings under whatever note it's sitting on. Uh, but the underneath the second and third fingers are involved as well. Little, I quite often find myself using little finger for, for this kind of stuff as well. Um, just because it means that I've got fingers one, two, and three there doing the string muting. Thumb gets a lot more involved. You, can't, you definitely can't be doing that with kind of round fingers like technical guitar hand position. You, you, you're going to have to have your thumb over like you're gripping a baseball bat kind of a, a grip on the neck. Um, and uh, yeah, it just takes practice and you've got to figure it out. A good, a good example is just doing exactly what I'm doing here at the, uh, 
at the set around the seventh fret and and just trying to get my little finger down I've put my little finger on the uh, ninth fret of the third string and I'm letting fingers one two and three sit right behind it thumbs reaching over and touching the thickest string as well and then just relax your little finger so you've got a mute complete mute and then try putting your little finger down and then see if you could alternate that between that and your first finger rogue notes ringing out there. Now a couple of things that uh, are going to happen. <laughs> One, if you think about it too much like I did you start making mistakes. You just have to think about it but you have to train yourself to be able to not think about it. Um, one of the things that uh, when I try to think about it to, in order to explain it to you, one of the things I've noticed is that I, I'm a little bit more selective with the string picking than I'd like to think I am. So I'd like to think I'm playing all the strings all the time, but I'm definitely not. So if I'm playing on the thinner string, pick is going nowhere near the thickest couple of strings if I'm doing that. Just, I, I probably could get away with, if, with that particular one because it's fairly simple, but if it was getting any more complicated, that it, it would definitely, uh, there'd be notes ringing out left, right and center, which isn't good. It's not such a bad thing if you get the occasional note ringing out because it happens even to some of the great guitar players. You hear these occasional notes ringing out with it. But if you've got a real solid groove on it and you're feeling it really good, because the feel and the pocket is the most important part of the funk guitar. So if you've got the feel and it, and it, and it feels great, having the occasional uh, open string ringing out a little bit is not going to kill anyone. But you want to aim to not have that happen. Um, when you're dealing with thicker strings, which is again quite common to have kind of little riffs, uh, okay, that kind of thing. I'm really thinking a lot more about the thicker strings. And again, I'm, you can see that I'm kind of keeping my hand close. It doesn't look like. A, I'm definitely moving it, but it, the movements are very small because it doesn't take much of a movement to, to let the notes ring it out. Now, as it gets more complicated and you've got bigger distances between notes, the harder it gets. You know, the, the uh, Can't Stop the Chili Peppers song, this incredible guitar playing by John Frusciante in that song. It's, it's such a, that's a really difficult song to make it sound like him, to get all of those mutes right so you can really be thrashing it hard and, and getting all of the notes clear without too many bogus notes ringing out. You know, so that's a good song to, to be checking out for that technique as well. Um, there's loads of examples of, of that. Stevie Ray Vaughan does a lot of that sort of thing. It's not just a funk thing, this idea of muting all of, all of the, the strings, but it is common in funk. But luckily, a lot of the times with that sort of thing, the lines are fairly simple, and you want to just keep it nice and simple because it's part of a bigger picture. Okay, it's not just the soul groove. Like Stevie Ray Vaughan is often guitar, bass, and drums, so he's really got to carry a lot of weight with what he's playing. But often with a funk thing, it might be a smaller part. There might be brass sections or lots of other instrumentation to, uh, around doing other stuff at the same time. So there's some ideas and some things to think about with your single line funk playing. And again, make sure you check out the website where I've got some example songs of each of these different things for you to go and check out because it's really important to be listening to stuff. Some of the songs I will have done lessons on as well, so there'll be links to check out those, uh, the, you know, how to put these techniques into actual songs because I think that's a, a pretty important kind of a deal as well. So uh, I hope that improves your single note funk playing and giving you some ideas to explore. And I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.